Feature importance scores are a collection of methods, all used to answer one question. Which model features have contributed the most to predictions in general? Amongst all these methods, permutation feature importance is the most popular. This is due to its intuitive calculation and because it can be applied to any machine learning model. Understanding PFI is also an important step in understanding more complex explainable AI methods like SHAP, LIME, and PDPs. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we're going to gain a deep understanding of PFI. To do this, we'll use Python to calculate important scores from scratch. We'll also discuss the logic behind the method, including why we permute, repeat, and which metric to use. Really, we'll be focusing on the P in PFI. Permutation is an important part of many model agnostic methods. Taking time to understand this approach and its limitations will make those methods easier to understand. So let's jump to the notebook. You can find the code with the link in the description. Before calculating PFI, we need a model. We start with our packages. In this video, we will use XGBoost. Notice there is no package to calculate PFI. As mentioned, we do this from scratch. To train a model, we'll be using the credit score dataset. It contains 84 features for 1,000 customers based on their transaction and financial position. We want to use this to estimate their credit risk, which is given by credit score. You can find a link to the full dataset in the description. We load the dataset and select some features. We also do a little bit of feature engineering. Specifically, we create one hot encodings from the gambling categorical features. We train our XGBoost model. To avoid overfitting, we set a max depth of three. Keep in mind that when you are applying model agnostic methods, you should always follow best practices, like using a train test split. The better your model, the more reliable your interpretations will be. This model should be good enough to understand PFI. We can visualize the performance of this model using a residual plot. We get the model predictions and plot these against their actual credit score. We add a red line, which gives the line of perfect predictions. By comparing the scatter plot points to this line, we can understand how well the model is doing. It is difficult to use this visualization to compare the performance of multiple models. So we need a way of summarizing all the residuals. For regression, a common metric is to use the coefficient of determination, also known as the R squared value. The higher the R squared value, the more accurate the predictions and perfect predictions would give an R squared value of one. With XGBoost, this metric is used by default by the score function. Using this code, we get an R squared value of 0.93. For PFI, we take this as our baseline score, the score when no feature has been permuted. We can compare changes to this baseline when we start permuting features. For PFI, permuting a feature means we shuffle the values of that feature. And as we will discuss later, when doing this, we must not sample from another feature or distribution. We simply shuffle the existing values of that feature around. Let's do this for one of the features in our model. We start by making a copy of the feature matrix we then permute the income feature. Using the model we trained on the original dataset, we make predictions on this permuted dataset. Using a residual plot, we can visualize the accuracy of these predictions in the same way as before. It is a mess. This tells us that income is being used by the model to make predictions. This 
is the core idea behind PFI. The model is using the relationship between income and credit score to make predictions. When we permute income, we break this relationship. And so the model makes worse predictions. Again, it is difficult to make an objective judgment on how much worse by using a visualization. Instead, we can calculate the R squared value for the permuted predictions. This gives us a value of negative 2.85. The important score is the baseline score less these permuted score. We get a value of 3.78. This is our measure of feature importance, the decrease in R squared when the feature is permuted. Using the get perm importance function, we can do the above calculation for multiple features. We pass in our model, X feature matrix, target variable, and list of features. You may also notice the end parameter. By default, we repeat the calculation 10 times and take the average as our final importance score. We discuss the logic behind this later. We apply this function to our XGBoost model and calculate the scores for all the features in the X feature matrix. We sort the scores based on the importance score and visualize them using a bar plot. You can see that debt and income are the most important features. Okay, so hopefully it is clear how we calculate PFI. Let's talk a bit more about the logic behind some of the choices we made and the limitations of this approach. The first question is why we permute? You may be tempted to replace the features values with any randomly sampled values. However, we permute a feature as it is important to sample from the same distribution as the original feature values for that feature. This ensures that the permuted feature values are realistic and representative of the variability observed in the actual data set. If we sample from a different distribution, we may introduce unrealistic scenarios that could lead to misleading importance scores. Take the income feature. Instead of permuting, suppose we replace its values with smaller than average income values or even negative values. This may lead the model to make predictions that are consistent with low income customers. In other words, it may only predict low credit scores and skew the importance score for this feature. There are actually a few ways to permute features and different explainable AI methods will use different approaches. For line, we sample from a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation as the feature. For PDPs, we sample from the entire range of the feature. For ALEs, we sample from a small interval around a feature value. In all cases, we will not sample values that are vastly different from the original feature values. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course with shifting public sentiment and movements to regulate AI, like the EU AI Act, Factors in machine learning like interoperability, safety, fairness, and transparency will become more important in the future. The course gives you the tools to help stay ahead of this trend. The next question is, why do we repeat the calculation? If you repeat the permutation code that calculated the importance score for income, you will get a different value each time. This is because permutation is a random process and there will be some variability in the values calculated. This is why we repeat the calculation and take the average of the scores. The end result is a more reliable estimate of the feature importance. The last question is, why do we use R squared? There is actually nothing special about R squared. It is just a common metric. We could have used any metric for evaluating regression models, such as mean squared error. For classification problems, it's common to use accuracy or AUC but you can also use precision or recall. You should use whatever metric or collection of metrics that makes sense for your application and audience. If you want to change the metric, you'll have to update lines eight 
and 23 in the get perm importance function. PFI is straightforward and useful to gain an overview of how your model works. It does, however, have its limitations. PFI can only be used for global interpretations. It also provides a relatively simple global interpretation. They focus on one insight. How important is each feature? Yet, the most significant limitation is the assumption that features are independent. This can lead to an unreliable estimate of that one insight. If two features are not independent, we say they are associated or correlated. This means that the value of one feature will change when we change the value of the other. Yet, with PFI, we only permute or change the values of one feature at a time. In other words, we are assuming that features are independent. This assumption can give us a misleading feature importance score in two ways. Firstly, a model could compensate for the absence of one feature by relying on its correlated counterpart. Suppose we include an additional measure of income in our model, income six. This is a person's income over the last six months. We can see that this is highly correlated with income, which is income over the last 12 months. We can also expect both features to have a similar relationship with the target variable. So to an extent, if we permuted income six, the model could still make accurate predictions using income and vice versa. The result could be low scores for both features that do not capture their true importance. Secondly, we could end up with feature value pairs that the model was not trained on, leading to unreliable predictions. Again, take the same features, income and income six. The red line gives the values when the two features are equal. After permuting the income six, we would have cases where a customer had more income in the last six months than in the last 12 months. In other words, we would create instances below the red line. This is obviously not possible, and we cannot know what effect it will have on model predictions. Most permutation-based approaches are impacted in the same way. So if you have multicollinearity, you may be wondering what to do. The first step is to try to remove the highly correlated features. You can also use a method that is robust to this effect, like ALEs. Really, you should keep in mind that the effects mentioned above will not necessarily have a large impact on the results. You can simply use the methods with an increased level of caution and validate any results with data exploration. If you're interested in explainable AI, you may enjoy this introduction to the field. Or check out this playlist, which goes into depth on one method, SHAP. And remember, you can get my XAI course for free with the link in the description.